So this is the Google Pixel, and it was an amazing first smartphone officially from Google. It combined good hardware with great software to give it the best camera at the time, one of the quickest and smoothest running phones, as well as a clean build of Android. So let's see how it holds up. The build quality on this thing is really good, and it's also really comfortable to hold as well. The main body is made out of anodized aluminum, and the top half of the back is covered in glass. It doesn't support wireless charging, but I personally like this design. So far it hasn't been scratched, and I'm hoping it stays that way because the lens for the camera is this entire glass panel. Overall, the design is pretty clean and minimal, it's built well, and it's comfortable to hold with the rounded corners and rounded edges on the back. The screen gets bright, it's colorful, it's sharp and detailed, and there's not much to complain about outside of those giant bezels. They're actually the same size as the Pixel 2, but the rounded corners make them seem a lot smaller. One thing that I noticed, and this surprised me a lot actually, is the OLED screen is actually a lot better than some of the 2017 flagships that I've tried. The biggest thing is the fact that the screen doesn't go blue when you look at it off angle. So the bezels are massive, but the panel itself is about on par with the Galaxy S7, meaning it's really good. It even handles outdoor use very well. The speakers however are terrible. They don't get very loud, they have zero bass, they distort a lot once you hit the last two volume increments, and they're just really bad compared to every other flagship of its year. But I guess the real reason that I don't mind them is the fact that this thing goes for $150 Canadian used on eBay, which number one is literally dirt cheap, and two is the only way that you're going to get this thing in 2018 as far as I'm aware. No carrier sell it, nor Best Buy or any other major stores. Apparently it got discontinued, which is a little a bit strange, but that's just how it is. So inside, it's rocking the Snapdragon 821 with Adreno 530 graphics, 4 gigs of RAM, and either 32 or 128 gigs of storage. And all of that combined with a clean build of Android means you got fast hardware running lightweight software, and this thing flies. Right now, I have all of the animation set to two times speed, and it's just really nice to see a phone be this quick without stuttering. Unlocking your phone, opening apps, multitasking, taking pictures, it's all instant and you're rarely waiting for this thing to load. One thing that I liked in particular are the wallpapers that the launcher gives you. Some of them have this sort of parallax effect where they physically change the angle and perspective of the photo. I'm a really big fan of this feature. Now, because this is a Pixel phone, you're always going to be one of the first smartphones to get software updates, so I loaded the Android P beta just to try out the new gestures, and I'm not really digging it. Now, to be fair though, this is in beta, so I'm sure Google will fine tune them with software updates, but aside from the very noticeable delays when opening apps and animations just completely hanging, it just doesn't feel natural and consistent. You can't swipe up to go home, that's only for the app searcher, and overall, I prefer the old nav bar because it's quicker and more consistent all around. The iPhone X's gestures are just nicer to use because of the animations, but I'm excited to see how Android will handle it when it officially drops. Battery life on this thing has also been great. It will easily last you a full day of moderate use at very high brightness, and for me, I'm getting around 6 hours of usage, 7 if I'm not watching YouTube as much. It does support fast charging, but compared to other smartphones, it's a little bit on the slow side. The camera on this thing takes one of, if not the best photos of any camera from 2016, and it's also one of the best cameras of any smartphone in its price range right now, hands down. You will not find anything better than the Pixel for 150 Canadian dollars. I took a couple photos just to see how it looks, and as expected, they look really good because of that HDR+, but I also went ahead and tested it in some more extreme situations using torches and welders. This is a cutting torch that mixes oxygen and acetylene to make a flame around 3000 degrees Celsius, or about 5500 Fahrenheit, and the camera was able to hold in the details of the flame fairly well. And then here's a photo of a TIG welder which gets much, much brighter. So bright in fact that the camera started to flicker a little bit and it got these weird lines going up and down as if I was pointing it at a TV screen, and they all had really intense lens flares going on. I actually got a little bit nervous thinking it might have melted some part of the camera, but it made it out alive so we're good. As for video, it's good, but it's not great. You can record it in 4K, but there's no optical stabilization, just electronic. And the audio quality is a little bit lacking, so if you're shooting video on your phone, you should probably look elsewhere. Oh yeah, that's a lot of black stuff. So 
Some other quirks with this phone is that it doesn't support micro SD expansion, it lacks water resistance, the power button is textured so you can differentiate between it and the volume rockers, which I really like by the way, the buttons are very clicky and tactile, the white earpiece fabric gets stained way too easily and now it just looks terrible, and it also keeps the headphone jack. So you win some, you lose some, but this phone overall has been a really enjoyable experience and easily my top recommendation for a budget smartphone under $200. So that's the end of my review, leave a comment with anything you'd like me to take a look at, and I'll catch you guys later.